Many people around the world turn to supplements to both prevent and treat different diseases. COVID-19 has been no different. As we wait for vaccine supplies to increase around the world, I suspect many will continue to look for different supplements that might prevent and treat COVID-19. Hi, I'm Dr. Lewis Grin, family medicine physician. And in today's video, we're gonna talk about three of those supplements that I see getting the most attention. They are vitamin C, zinc, and vitamin D. Okay, let's get started. So why have these three supplements been singled out to try and prevent or treat COVID-19? I suspect that comes from our belief that these three supplements can improve our immune system and might prevent other common viruses such as those that cause the common cold. I'm going to talk about vitamin C and zinc together because unfortunately I think the data for these two supplements is lacking. Vitamin C is a water-soluble vitamin it is an antioxidant and free radical scavenger that has anti-inflammatory properties and influences cellular immunity. Zinc is the second most common trace mineral found in the human body. It's a micronutrient that affects all organs and cells and plays a role regulating metabolism and the immune system. Unfortunately, neither supplement has been proven to prevent infection with any viruses. And unfortunately, that includes SARS-CoV-2, the virus that causes COVID-19. However, there is some limited evidence that both vitamin C and zinc might shorten the duration of the common cold by about a day or so. Unfortunately, that doesn't seem to translate to COVID-19. A recent study done by the University of Chicago compared zinc, zinc plus vitamin C, and vitamin C alone to standard care. It was a randomized controlled trial in persons with COVID who did not require hospitalization. There was no statistical difference in the time to 50% reduction in symptoms between the groups, and the study unfortunately was stopped early due to poor performance. Now, zinc does bear watching a little bit further because a recent study out of Spain showed that persons who had lower levels of zinc on admission were associated with worse disease. According to the authors, lower zinc levels at admission correlate with higher inflammation in the course of infection and poor outcome. Plasma zinc levels at admission are associated with mortality in COVID-19 in our study. Further studies are needed to assess the therapeutic impact of this association. So, while it doesn't appear that vitamin C has the ability to prevent or treat COVID-19, it does bear watching on the effects of zinc, particularly in those with low zinc levels, and what effect it may have on the severity of their disease. I see more hope and potential with vitamin D though. Vitamin D may help boost our body's natural defense against viruses and bacteria, and it may help prevent an exaggerated inflammatory response, which has been shown to contribute to severe illness in some people with COVID-19. As shown with zinc, I think the real benefit here is in people who have low levels of vitamin D to start with. According to a 2011 study, 41.6% of adults in the U.S. are vitamin D deficient. That number is actually higher in persons who live above the 35th parallel and in those with darker skin tones. This may actually be one reason why we see an increased number of cases, as well as an increased number of deaths, in blacks and Latinos. Over the course of the past year, there have actually been many studies done on vitamin D and its link to COVID-19. Unfortunately, these are observational or retrospective studies that have been unable to show any definitive causal link between vitamin D and COVID-19. They have also showed mixed results. Unfortunately, some have showed no benefit or no association between vitamin D and COVID-19, while others have shown an association with taking vitamin D regularly and less severe disease, as well as a mortality benefit when treated with high doses of vitamin D. A recent study in JAMA Network Open by University of Chicago researchers linked vitamin D deficiency with a greater likelihood of testing positive for SARS-CoV-2. However, an earlier study 
done in the UK showed no association. Now, there was some concern with the UK study because the levels of vitamin D in that study were actually measured up to a decade ago. So unfortunately, we can't draw any definitive conclusions from that study. So while it appears that unfortunately vitamin D cannot prevent COVID-19, there may be some benefit, especially to those with a low vitamin D level to start with, in decreasing the severity of the disease. Unfortunately, more randomized controlled trials are needed before we can make any definitive conclusions. Luckily, there are over 30 registered trials on clinicaltrials.gov looking at the effects of vitamin D on COVID-19. Now, if you choose to take supplements, please do so safely. Supplements are not 100% safe just because they're over the counter and considered natural. They do have side effects, especially if you take them in high amounts. Please do not take any more than the recommended daily allowance of any of these supplements. For zinc, the recommended daily allowance is 11 milligrams for men and eight milligrams for women with the upper limits of acceptable doses being at 40 milligrams. Vitamin C has a recommended daily allowance of 65 to 90 milligrams per day, with 2,000 milligrams being the upper limit. Any more than that, and you are actually just likely to pee it out because it's a water-soluble vitamin. Vitamin D has a recommended daily allowance of 600 international units for persons less than 70 and 800 international units for those older than 70 with 1,000 to 2,000 international units being considered safe by most providers. All right, I hope you found this video helpful. If so, please give it a like. It helps other people see the video. I hope you'll also consider subscribing to my channel for more content in the future. And while you're at it, leave me a comment down below and let me know if you take any supplements, and if so, which ones. All right, now remember, nothing is 100% at preventing COVID. So even if you're taking supplements or if you've been lucky enough to be vaccinated, you will need to continue to wear your mask, wash your hands, keep your distance, and as always, be safe out there.